Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to a little exciting video that I've thrown together and hope you'll enjoy. I want to start off with a big shout out to Sam Sh Shimla. I hope I've not butchered that. He gave me a shout out on uh, a Facebook group and suddenly my channel exploded, which is a very nice feeling. Uh, he's got a lot of really cool generative work here and he's really big on the subreddit as well. If you haven't checked out r slash MacTimusB, come and, come and say hello. Today, what are we doing? We are playing with Etta Sketch and I've thought, oh, oh, I dug through the, the piece bin in Arduino and I managed to come together with two dials. I've got a, a potentiometer and a rotary encoder, which is an absolute nightmare to wire together, but I threw, threw two dials together so we have a little Etta Sketch. And if we turn it on and we have a little play. You'll have to excuse my drawing ability, I'm not not the greatest, but we have a nice little etch a, etch, oh, etch a sketch. That is really hard to say no matter how many times I practice this video. Uh, and yeah, so I'm not going to be a, well maybe this is a Picasso in the making. Uh, he is a very abstract artist. Uh, but it's a nice little thing you can throw together really quickly with some Arduino using the code that we learned here. And then we uh, we just bring it all through the serial port and then use the values to create this nice little LCD drawing line 2 tool. So I'm not going to go into great detail about the uh, processing section, uh, the Arduino section, excuse me, but I'll show you the code. So all we do is I've got a potentiometer pin and then my rotary encoder pins, which if you're not familiar with Arduino and what a rotary encoder is, it's essentially a pin that can tell whether it's turning forward or back. So it's probably got a really practical use in the real world, but I'm using it to draw lines in Max MSP because I don't know what else to do with my life. Uh, so I've got the two combined code here, but really if you could get two potentiometers, you could actually make a much nicer uh, it's a sketch here, but I've not been able to steal from work. I mean, borrow the assets required from somewhere. It's very similar to when we were bringing in the value of the button in the serial one, but we, so we, we define its, its digital pin, or it is actually an analog input, but I've got it on a digital pin just because uh, I use an Arduino Uno, which it has strange values everywhere. Uh, so I would stick to a much easier Arduino code if you just do Arduino potentiometer. Uh, there's a great Arduino tutorial for this, which you can borrow the code for and duplicate it really easily. So potentiometer, it rotates between 0 and 1023. It requires three cables, no resistors, because they're all soldered onto the back of it. And it only requires nine or ten lines of code to get it all working. Uh, you don't need the ones about the LED or turning it on and off. If we look back at mine, all we need is uh, this one here. So the potent pot val or potentiometer value equals the analog read of whatever pin you set it to. And that's it. And then we do the hard part in max, which is given it a scale. So uh, if we look at this one here, which is our we open up our Arduino patch, you'll see it's just a direct copy of what I created in Shooting again. Uh, and then instead of putting it into a scale, we, we unpack those two values so we now have our left and right, or our one and two. On the Arduino board, it looks just like this. So we have the two values separated by a space. And you can see here that I've got really random values coming in off my uh, rotary encoder and then my potentiometer separated by space, because that was the value that we used in max to define our differences. If we get these out of the way. So it comes in and I know my potentiometer goes between 0 and 1, 2, 3 or 1024. I then scale that between 0 and then the value we define, which is the, the maximum size of our 
uh, LCD screen Y in this case, we split that into X and Y. And then we pass it to a dial that's set to the same, just so we have a nice visual representation of that. And it's literally as simple as this dial here controls the X, this dial here controls the... Let me reset it so we can see that. This controls the X, and that controls the Y. Beautiful. Because of the way that the potentiometer works, and that just goes from uh, 0 to infinity in either side, so negative or positive. So what I do is, no matter what the value is, I've limited it to be between 0 and 15. And then I've scaled 0 and 15 to 1, uh, 0 and 1024, again, just so we have a nice value like this. And then it goes into a bucket, which stores the two numbers, and then it outputs them in a row, so it'll put it'll check between the two values and then it'll ramp between them in the 100 milliseconds because I was having a problem where my uh, rotor encoder was skipping so I'd have line, gap, line, gap, line, gap because the line 2 tool was missing some information because of how big the scale down was here so I added this in just so it's a nice smooth line uh, no matter where it is and that's it, it's a nice simple project using a little tool that we've learned before, so again that whole how do I get better at Max myself by playing about with it. Uh, what you could really do is if you've watched yesterday's video, you could see if you can set it up with OSC from the touchscreen, there's a lot of dials built into touch OSC. Why not hook them up using the oscillator and then turn that into an exasketch.